Hey, good afternoon. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I think you're going to find this video helpful if you're uh, putting an engine in your Chevy Traverse, or I'm sorry, Chevy Equinox, or your GMC Terrain. Um, this is going to be some great stuff. Hopefully it, it is, and if it is, please subscribe. Uh, click the notification box and share my videos. If you want to, you can reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. Uh, that's the easiest way to get a question to me really quickly. Um, remember, you can't break what's already broken, and if any other man can do it, you can do it too. Okay, I'm going to let you know right now that this video is not about changing your motor. I'm putting it up that way, hopefully to catch you before you go out and purchase a used engine for your 2012 terrain and show you that you don't have to do that. I'm sorry if I was deceitful, I wasn't trying to be, I'm trying to help you out. There's going to be people that I'm going to be able to catch with making the video and listing it as, uh, you know, GMC engine removal, uh, GMC uh, terrain engine removal, or Chevy Equinox engine removal. I apologize if you're looking for that and you can't find it, I haven't made a video of it yet. But this video is going to show you some sweet stuff. So this is super sweet stuff that I'm going to bring to you today. I've already verified that this is going to work. So I'm pretty certain I won't post the video if it doesn't, but I'm going to drop some sweet knowledge and save you a couple thousand bucks. Watch the whole video because uh, I don't know what I'm going to say in it. First off, what we're doing is we've got a 2012 Chevy Equinox. It has got uh, high pressure injectors um, and the motor has spun a rod and broke a piston down inside here on that cylinder so it's no quarto no more it's no good uh, the problem with this scenario was is to get one of these particular motors for it was about twenty two hundred dollars for for one used okay we could of course send it over to our rebu engine rebuilder and you know for about twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred at a normal shop uh, we could probably get this one rebuilt and they would take it out and do all the work. If you went to the GM, they'd probably want four or five thousand, maybe even six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some sweet knowledge on that butt and uh, tell you how to replace this motor as inexpensive as possible and still have something good. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to call up the junkyard and we're going to find us a, a a motor out of a. In my situation, I used a 2006 Chevy Cobalt engine. Now it only had 114,000 miles on it. And this is where my recommendation comes in. If you're gonna buy a junkyard motor anyways, and even if you get one for a thousand bucks that's exactly right that can go in this here, you're gonna wanna do a couple things to it, doesn't matter. More than likely you're not gonna get a 30,000 mile motor. If you do, just put that sucker in. But if it's 100,000, 120,000, take the head off of it. If you're gonna do all this work, replace the head gaskets, Replace all the timing components with the exception of the gears. Uh, because if you're already on the cheap, you're probably going to buy cheap gears. You're going to probably buy a cheap timing set. And I use them cheap timing sets all the time. I don't use the gears out of them. The reason is, is because they're not machined as fine as the originals. So, long story short, I went to the El Junco yard. And I'm going to show you the only difference that I found on the 2006 Chevy Cobalt. And this one, this is the one out of the actual car. There's no bolts here. And on the 2006, there's, uh, they're almost like, I'm not quite certain what they're for, what passages, what they do and what passages they are for, but they're like little studs that go there. And this doesn't use them, so it doesn't really matter. And the other engine didn't use them either. The other problem that you could run into, and I verified that mine was actually correct and accurate, is I pulled the crank sensor out of here. Now this crank sensor tells the ECM where the engine is at. And on this particular tone ring, which is what that little little notchy looking thing down in there, it's called a tone ring. It only has one thick space. So that tells me that the engine knows where uh, number one cylinder is, doesn't tell it anything else, just tells it where it's at top dead center. So this communicates to the ECM, hey, I'm at top dead center. And then talks to the cams that would be up there in the cam positioning sensor and tells them if they're off. Now I counted this, but I kept getting miscounts because the piston's broken in this one and we can't move the engine as steadily. On the other engine, I got 58. 
and on this one I was like 55 or 56 or something like that and when these manufacturers manufacture these engines they're not going to manufacture it with the variance of two teeth so I'm not too worried about that at all and if like I said if this doesn't actually work I won't post the video uh, but the thing you got to think of when you're thinking about auto manufacturers and why they would do something like this okay so the 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 biggest difference between the 06 Cobalt and the 2012 Chevy Equinox is the cylinder head. This has uh, direct, what's called direct injection. The original cylinder head from the 2006 Cobalt just has conventional fuel injection. So that's going to be different. So you have to have a good cylinder head to start with. Uh, this just blew a piston out, so we got a good cylinder head. Uh, we'll go through the cylinder head. And, I, and I, if I didn't think this was stuff that you might attempt at home, this is a big job. So, you know, I mean, obviously, I've got mine taken out, set on uh, jack stands, and that's how I cradled the engine. Um, it is a very big job, and it's very encompassing. But if you know that you can get a 2006 Chevy Cobalt, which is a $400 engine, which is what I paid for mine anyways, but I do own a shop, so they probably give me a little break. But if you can get a 2006 Chevy Cobalt, say for 650 bucks, you, no matter if you bought a used uh, 2012 engine or not, you're still going to want to do all this stuff because this stuff is crap in these cars. They they go bad. You get another hundred thousand miles out of this engine. Um, you have to switch everything over. You're not going to find stuff like this uh, evaporative system on that. But Everything else switches over, like on the 2006 Chevy Cobalt, it doesn't have these studs that hold the alternator on, but we have to remove the studs. This is some great stuff, and okay, so I wanted to spend a couple moments to tell you about why this is a possibility that this could actually work. The situation is that when you're a manufacturer and you're manufacturing thousands of cars, okay, you have to manufacture them as affordably as possible. Now, to some people, that this might seem like a no-brainer. Like, of course that works. And to other people, this might be like, that would never work in a million years because they're totally different cars. Well, the simple fact of the matter is, just like I said, if you're going to manufacture, if you're a big manufacturer like uh, Ford or Dodge or, or any of them other things, uh, Chevrolet and stuff, you need to manufacture things as efficiently as possible. So... You can have a totally different design, and we obviously know that the Chevy Cobalt is totally different than the Chevy Equinox or, you know, the GMC terrain. But the heart is this part right here. This is very expensive to manufacture an engine. So making an engine block that is universal to many makes and models is actually cuts down on cost of producing a vehicle. Making the exterior different, you know, that's aesthetic to people. That looks different, but primarily underneath they're all the same. Your old Grand Prix, your Pontiac Grand Prix was pretty much the same as your Chevy Impala. Your Chevy Venture was the same as some of your Chevy Impalas. You know, they were pretty much the same vehicle underneath. They, sh they had a few little things that were different, but for the most part, the engine and the transmission stayed the same. Now, manufacturers like Chrysler... They manufacture what's called their tone ring for whatever reason. They used to run what's called a 16 tooth tone ring and they went to a 32 tone tooth tone ring and they had a 4.7 that had a 32 tooth tooth tone ring and a 4.7 that had a 16 tooth tone ring. That was that ring that I showed you guys back inside there. So I had to double check and make sure that that General Motors didn't do the exact same thing because we weren't cross-referencing this. And according to the Hollander Index, this would not actually work. The Hollander Index is the index that tells us what might interchange and what might not. So, as far as I can tell at this moment, this is going to go as smooth as pie. I'm going to have a nice new low-mileage engine with all brand new components inside it that when I sell it to someone... They're going to be extremely happy and they're going to have many years of great use out of at an affordable price because the vehicle has a lot of miles on it. But we all are we are working on a vehicle that's worth putting the money into. Because this is the 2012 Chevy Equinox and it's all-wheel drive, even though it has 190,000 miles on it, I can be extremely confident in what I sell these folks, whoever it is that ends up purchasing this from me. Hope that information was helpful to you guys and enlightened you a little bit on how automobiles are manufactured. Okay, so 
with all that said, I'm not saying that you have to get an engine block out of a 2006 Chevy Cobalt, but if you do, that's what'll work in here. Now you might be able to get it out of a 2004 for all I know, or a 2009 Chevy Malibu. It, just look at it, examine it, see if it looks the same, and if it looks the same, it more than likely is. I mean, we know that we're not going to um, have any problems with something newer than 2006, even if it's out of a Chevy Malibu, or it's out of a um, Saturn View, or some weirdo 2.4. But if you're doing this, let us know on the video underneath the comments if, hey, I took mine out of blah, 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 and it worked for me. So everyone else knows, and we're doing this to save everybody some money. You, me, and everyone else. And that's why I make these videos. Give you a little it. overview of this motor. And you'll also notice that my wiring harness is out. Uh, just some tips. I, I didn't make a video of showing you how to take it out, but I ended up undoing the fuse box and pulling out the um, this out of the bottom of the fuse box. There was a stud that, that held that on there. And that's my engine controls. So that pretty much when I go to put this engine back up in there, it's going to be complete. Uh, AC compressor is going to be on it, you know, um, alternator, cylinder head, everything. We're going to do all our work right here. We're going to change all of our head, head gaskets and, and everything right there and set our head on and bolt everything down, our flywheel bolts, um, torque converter bolts, etc. And I'll take you out there and show you the other motor so you can get a good idea. So this is our donor engine. Um, if you were looking at the cylinder head, There'd be a couple things. There's a high pressure uh, pump on the back of here that this doesn't have. Um, these are those studs that I was showing you that are broken off on mine. Uh, this has obviously got a cylinder head on there, um, but everything is pretty much there. These are the studs that I was talking about that mine don't have that this has, but it's pretty much the same. I mean, even the cover is the same. Uh, the the upper valve cover is obviously different and we obviously like i said we have to change that well to change the exhaust manifold uh this one has what's called a um block heater in it we don't need that so we won't be hooking that up but we probably won't remove it either uh but yeah this is i'm super stoked about this because i'm absolutely certain this is going to work and uh hopefully that helps you guys out please subscribe share my videos click the notification box god bless you guys Remember, don't be the next to them, be the first to you. Have a great day.